strong views, which sometimes I agree with. Uh, but it's also a pleasure to uh, follow my honourable friend, the member for Grantham and, yeah, yeah, and Stanford. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he clearly feels very passionately for his constituency. And I must say, having been to speak at an annual dinner for his predecessor, I agree, they're a great bunch of people and it's yeah. a beautiful place. And congratulations to him. And I think today is a day to be proud of. I think our right honourable friend, the Chancellor, has really got the balance right between levelling up across the United Kingdom but also protecting the public purse. And I, for one, am delighted by the support that he is giving to businesses to get through the difficult period ahead for science and innovation, where the UK really can lead the world in so many areas, but also, very importantly, for decarbonising our economy, something that's absolutely critical to the interests of the UK. And there's no doubt, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the events of the last decade have changed just about everything. From the global financial crisis that still echoes around our economy to the existential threat from climate change and now the new challenge of coronavirus, what we're seeing every single day is that the world is becoming in many ways like a village. What happens overseas impacts us here profoundly and what we do in the UK has a powerful impact on the world around us. Madam Deputy Speaker, when I was 13, I was so scared of a global nuclear war that I decided to become an MP when I grew up. And that fear and the determination to do something about it has shaped much of my earlier life. And today's teenagers also have cause to be equally fearful, from the existential threat to our planet to new threats like coronavirus, huge issues to deal with that need every single one of us to pull together if we are to deliver the bright future we want to see. But with every challenge, there is opportunity. In doing the right thing for the planet, our net zero ambition offers us the chance to enhance the global economy. The UK is already leading the world in tackling global climate change. Since 1990, we've reduced our carbon emissions by 43%, whilst growing our economy by 73%. We're decarbonising faster than any other G20 economy, and we were the first major economy to legislate for net zero by 2050. Today, there are over 450,000 green-collar jobs, and this could reach more than 2 million by 2030. From wind turbine blade testing in Northumberland to electric car manufacturing in the Midlands, the UK is spearheading the next generation of green technology, production and job creation. And every sector has a role to play, with the prospect of new skills, better paid jobs and the spread of growing prosperity across the country. And it's great that research shows young people agree the green economy is full of opportunity. In fact, two-thirds of them, almost 3.7 million young people, say they would rather work in the green economy than outside it. But they need to see our commitment. And so I was delighted today to hear my right honourable friend, the Chancellor, setting out wide-ranging plans for new investment, including in green transportation, in tree planting and biodiversity improvements, and vitally in areas like carbon capture, usage and storage, something that in 2015, as the uh, honourable lady for Leeds West mentioned earlier, was postponed, and now we have the chance to bring it back and really motor CCUS, which is not just a levelling up story, but it's also a great UK decarbonisation and export potential story. And when the UK hosts COP26 later this year, we'll have the chance to deliver game-changing agreements with international partners. I want to see UK leadership in action. Specifically, I want to see the UK commit to establishing an international green finance organisation, one that will facilitate long-term investment in decarbonisation and that will also finally resolve the complex rules by which individual countries can demonstrate their own climate action and carbon reduction. Secondly, I think COP26 should launch an internationally recognised carbon offset licensing body.
And thirdly, I want to see every nation represented at COP26 providing their own contribution to a yearbook of pledges and achievements that can then be reported on and built upon at each future COP. The innovation is already underway to help the world to decarbonise, from CCOS to nuclear fusion to battery storage and beyond, but it will take strong leadership to convince every nation to prioritise net zero. The UK can provide this leadership, and COP26 can be a turning point for global action. But if the world is a village when it comes to tackling climate change, then each and every one of us must play our part too. So providing practical advice on how individuals and families can reduce their carbon footprint, be greener and take action against climate change mm -hmm. is something I know Bayes is focused on. I hope that an app commissioned when I was in Bayes will be launched in time for Green GB and NI Week in May with support from schools and universities providing practical advice to young people and their families on how to decarbonise their lives. If we all come together we can turn the global challenge of climate change into an opportunity to be a cleaner, greener nation that is a role model for others around the world. And now, Madam Deputy Speaker, right in front of us is yet more proof that the world is, in many ways, a village. And again, it's only collectively that we can overcome the threat by not allowing our fears over coronavirus to undermine our lives and our economy. So I welcome that the Chancellor has provided strong support to get through the difficult months ahead, whilst also looking at the longer-term needs of our economy. And each of us needs to do all we can to minimise the impact of coronavirus on our future prospects. Taking sensible steps to avoid spreading the virus will mean many working from home. But whilst it might be tempting to stockpile loo rolls, why? <laughs> to switch on the TV and to wait for the storm to pass, those of us that aren't sick must keep on going so that means students studying at home, and I include my 16-year-old daughter studying for her GCSEs in that personal plea. <laughs> it means working from home where we can, taking part in teleconferencing and Skype calls. It means buying groceries online. It means supporting local businesses. And yes, it also means volunteering in the community where we can. All of us must come together to protect our future with the collective spirit that the UK has always shown at times of trouble. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, the existential challenge of climate change and now the urgent issue of coronavirus demonstrate more than ever the need for concerted effort around the world by governments and by individual citizens working together for the common good. And each one of us has our part to play. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Madam Deputy Speaker, the World Health Organization uh, today pronounced that the coronavirus is now a pandemic. So it's uh, not surprising that 